Today I have nothing because I had to send it back, but I had the Sony Alpha 6100 for a few weeks. I borrowed it from Sony along with a couple of their APS-C lenses because I wanted to try it out. I love my powerhouse Alpha 7 R4 and my other full frame bodies, but I don't feel that I always need to be using the most expensive top of the line cameras. I have always enjoyed using all sorts of gear. I own different types of gear, and I know many of you out there feel the same way. It's a balance of capability, usability, and the purpose and preferences of the user that make a piece of gear a good choice or a not so good choice, and not to mention budget. <laughs> In fact, I asked you for your questions about the Alpha 6100 in a first impressions of the camera video, and I will answer those as we go along today. So let's discuss the Alpha 6100. first for those of you that don't actually want to watch a video. <laughs> I like it. It just works. It was easy to grab and to put into my bag. Having experience with Sony cameras, it was easy to use right away. And I got excellent results, photo and video. Plus, there were times that because of the compact size of the camera and its APS-C lenses, I was able to bring a camera with me when I would not have grabbed something larger like my Alpha 7 R4 and its associated full frame lenses. A camera in the hand is worth two on the shelf, am I right? Okay, on to the review. I'm going to put some of the Alpha 6100 specs on the screen right now. I won't discuss every one of these in detail in this video, but here they are if there is anything in particular that you are wanting to know. Some highlights are that it is an APS-C camera. You have 24 megapixels. You've got 4K video capabilities. There is no in-body image stabilization, but there is a flip-up screen. Body only retails in the US at just under $600, but I will add a link in the description so that you can see what current pricing is in your area. Okay, let's move on, but I will come back around to some of these items throughout this video and how those specifications may or may not be important to you. So I mentioned image quality and video quality in my conclusion a minute ago. Let's expand on that. I was nothing but impressed. Frankly, I don't expect anything less than stellar image quality from any new camera. Of course, lenses have a huge impact on image quality. I used three lenses on this camera. The power zoom 16 to 50 millimeter f 3.5 to 5.6 OSS, that's the kit lens. The 16 to 55 f 2.8 G, both of those two lenses are optimized for the APS-C sensor and both were borrowed. And I also used my 200 to 600 millimeter f 5.6 to 6.3 G lens. Theoretically, the kit lens would be the one that provided the lowest image quality, right? But if you take a look at this photo that I took with the Alpha 6100 and the kit lens of another camera that I was reviewing and zooming into the name on the lens, which is where I was focused, it's very crisp. And you can also see how dirty the lens was. <laughs> great. My point here is that even the kit lens looks great, but looking at something a little more scenic. Here is a sunset time-lapse. I used the 16-55 f2.8G lens for this, 
Incidentally, the Alpha 6100 does have a built-in interval timer, which I made use of here. The images that make up this time lapse were captured in RAW and I edited them, but nothing intense. No masking or graduated filters or anything like that, just basic edits. Wonderful image quality, wonderful dynamic range, wonderful, wonderful. I love it. Now still image quality is fantastic, but so is video. You can shoot video at up to 4K at 30 frames per second, or at a whole slew of other sizes and frame rates, which I will put up on the screen right now so that I don't have to say them all. You can see if your favorite is there. I shot primarily in 4K at 30 frames per second, but I did have a viewer ask me about slow-mo, so I did do some of that. This was shot in 1080p and then upscaled for this 4K video. This was captured using the 200 to 600 millimeter lens, in case you're curious. I waited patiently for this bird to ruffle his feathers, and it looks good. I did do a teeny bit of color grading in Final Cut Pro. While the video looks great, I didn't find myself doing a lot of video with the Alpha 6100 because it doesn't have in-body image stabilization. I know this is a polarizing topic, but let's all try to stay rational here. <laughs> no IBIS means that handheld video, which is typically what I do, was pretty shaky, though the OSS lenses, OSS means that they have optical stabilization, do help. But putting the camera on a tripod for video was the best option for me. So, no in-body image stabilization. As I just mentioned, that has implications for video, but not everyone shoots video, and it may or may not be important to you for still photography. I've had viewers say that their hands are shaky and they absolutely need IBIS. If that's the case, this camera is not for you. I'll talk about the Alpha 6600 towards the end of this video, which does have IBIS. IBIS can also be helpful in low light situations if your subject allows you to slow your shutter speed, but some lenses have optical stabilization that can help with that. And on current generation cameras, including this Alpha 6100, we are able to increase our ISO sensitivity to allow us to speed up our shutter speed as fast as we need to in low light situations and still maintain image quality within reason. For me, I have cameras with IBIS, I have cameras without it, and I use them all. If it's necessary for you, that's up to you. Let's discuss another thing that can be polarizing, autofocus detection and tracking. I appreciate what Sony's autofocus system has evolved to. While technical skill and muscle memory with your camera and getting yourself into the right place at the right time, plus a whole slew of other factors, are all paramount to getting lots of good shots. The dare I say magical real-time autofocus tracking on the Sony cameras these days, Alpha 6100 included, is really nice to have. It's quick and accurate. It definitely allows me to get more usable shots. And what I perhaps find even more handy is that I'm able to concentrate more on composition in situations like this one where I was photographing a bird in flight. I can trust that the camera has my back, and as long as I've done my job properly with settings and I can keep the subject in the frame, the camera will track the subject. Also, the Alpha 6100 has human and animal eye detect. Human eye detect works quite well. That is a foregone conclusion with a lot of cameras now. Being that my options for subjects are limited right now. I was only able to try the animal eye detect on bunnies and jackrabbits, which are not ideal candidates for animal eye detection. That being said, it worked as well as I have experienced with my Alpha 7 R4. It was enough for me to be able to compare it to the autofocus detection testing I've done on the Alpha 7 R4 and the RX100 Mark 7. This falls in line with those, which is to say that humans are detected really well, and animals like dogs and cats are also detected well. Other animals aren't guaranteed. In situations like birds in flight and pet photography, you may be trying to shoot quickly. The Alpha 6100 will shoot at up to 11 frames per second with autofocus and auto exposure. I photographed birds in flight. I had Raymond on his bike multiple times riding back and forth for me. <laughs> the autofocus tracking kept up with the frame rate. I was particularly impressed in difficult lighting situations like this one, where Raymond was in and out of the shafts of light coming through the trees. Those sharp changes in exposure didn't fool the camera. It kept tracking. Let's jump into usability. This is where I actually received the most questions from you all. 
I think that the usability of the camera is just as important as the image quality and the smarts like autofocus tracking. Beginning with battery life. As the Alpha 6100 is a smaller camera, we can expect that battery life is not going to be as long as larger full frame bodies. This camera is rated at up to 420 shots per battery charge, but I did way better than that. Take a look at this time lapse, which in total had over a thousand raw images and didn't even come close to depleting the battery. When I limited the camera's stuff that it had to do for each shot, like here using manual focus and manual exposure, I didn't worry about battery life. Even when I was out for the day with the camera, I just made sure to bring a USB battery pack, which I almost always have with me anyway, because you can charge this camera via micro USB, even when you're actively using it. I did notice that the electronic viewfinder isn't quite up to par with other electronic viewfinders I've been using. So I looked it up and it is indeed lower resolution. It has 1.44 million dots. It didn't change how I shoot. It isn't even something that would prevent me from purchasing this camera. But if that is important to you, there's the information. LCD was a different story. It was great. The screen even flips up if you're into selfies. The one bummer is that if you are shooting a video with the microphone in the hot shoe, the hot shoe mic is in the way. I mean, I used it anyway. I couldn't see the entire screen, but I could at least see that I had my face in the yellow box indicating that I was in focus. On a related note, there is a mic jack. Now, because putting a mic in the hot shoe gets in the way of the flip up screen, Sony's website shows using a rig with the camera when you want the screen flipped up and a microphone attached. I think that's fine for a lot of people, but it's not ideal for a hybrid shooter like me. I've got my camera around my neck, I'm hiking, I'm shooting, the camera's back hanging around my neck. For me and for how I shoot, the rig kind of defeats the purpose of having the small camera. That being said, I've never shot with it on a rig and I may enjoy it depending on what I was doing. Speaking of the size of the camera, I really like the size and form factor of this body. No hump on the top means that it was easier to fit into bags because I am often arranging and rearranging gear in my camera bags. That was something that I truly appreciated. Now this camera is made of a heavy duty plastic rather than being metal, but I brought it all over, including on mountain bike rides, and I didn't think twice about it. This is also the typical customizable Sony body. The menus are extensive. Most of the buttons and dials plus the My menu and the Function menu can be changed to almost whatever you want them to be. Now there are fewer buttons and dials on the Alpha 6100 than on the full frame bodies like my Alpha 7 R4, but you have so many customizations that I didn't have an issue. This all depends on how you like to shoot though. I had some folks asking about balancing a small camera body with a large lens. I took the Alpha 6100 out with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens often. I shot handheld every time. I sat around waiting for birds to look at me. It never caused me a moment's thought. I did also shoot the Supermoon handheld, but then I put the camera on a tripod to capture some video of it moving through the frame. The idea of being comfortable shooting handheld and of balance is certainly a personal preference. Now, this camera was introduced at the same time as Sony's flagship APS-C body, the Alpha 6600. I have not used it yet, so I can't draw any real life comparisons, but I can say with confidence that I would enjoy using that body just as much. The experience would have been much the same. It does have in-body image stabilization and a higher quality electronic viewfinder, a better battery life, but I don't think that one body is inherently better than the other. If you are in the market for an APS-C body, take a look at the specifications of both. Pick out the specs that you find important and see which one falls in line with your needs. And also there's price. The Alpha 6600 is more than twice the price. Are those fancier specs of the Alpha 6600 worth the money to you? Okay, let's get back around to my conclusion. I took thousands of photos with the Alpha 6100 in the few weeks that I had it. Time lapses, individual still photos, video. I have been a little challenged because some of my favorite places are not available to me right now. So I took it out for sunrise. I took it out for sunset. I took it out midday in the sun, which isn't always the best for photos, but 
I'm not sorry, that's what you do with a camera. The conditions are not always ideal, but the fact that I could easily fit the Alpha 6100 into my Camelback and hop on my mountain bike or go running meant that I was taking photos when I might not otherwise even be bringing a dedicated camera. It was great. And because I know many of you will ask, will I be purchasing the Alpha 6100? No, I have too many cameras right now. <laughs> That being said, I did not take pleasure in sending it back. During my time with it, I grabbed the Alpha 6100 over my Alpha 7 R4 on many occasions. But considering all of the gear I already have, if I were to purchase a smaller Sony body, I think I would either want in-body image stabilization for my video work here on my channel, like I said earlier, I do usually shoot handheld, or I may even go with the RX100 Mark VII, which has a smaller sensor, but it is super small and super fun to use. So that's how I feel about it. But I also think that this is a fantastic camera body. Is it the one for you? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? What do you think of the Alpha 6100? Do you own it? Did you choose something else and why? Let me know in the comments. And I'll add a few links in the description of this video to the Alpha 6100, to my gear reviews playlist, which contains my reviews of lots of gear, including the Alpha 7 R4, the RX100 Mark 7, the Nikon Z50, so that you can check those out. Before you go though, please like this video if you found it helpful or entertaining. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'm still working here. I'm reviewing gear. I'm going on photo outings. I even have some videos coming your way on workflow with large files and photo editing. Click the bell to be notified when new videos go live. And thank you for watching.